Okay, this video is about biblical and common sense eschatology. Now, I sent out an email of late uh, requesting questions or topics that people would like to hear because when the student's ready, the teacher is available. <laughs> Uh, and I, you know, the teachers I've learned in life are the best six teachers are who, what, when, where, why, and how. Those are the best teachers. So we're going to look at biblical and common sense eschatology. Eschatology, eschatology means uh, it's a part of theology concerning the final events of history of the world or of mankind. So it deals with end times. And so what I did is I got online and I, I found uh, three different articles or viewpoints that uh, describe or summarize the three different ideas about eschatology. Uh, that way, I, you know, I get it straight from either the source or what this party is thinking. Okay, and so, you know, I have uh, no desire, no desire to misrepresent a position, even if that position's wrong. And often if you discuss this with somebody, uh, remember to get in the habit to establish <clears throat> the definition of a word and ask the party what they mean by the word. Okay, now there are three different ideas about eschatology. Uh, one article says four, but what, it, what they're doing is dividing one into two different camps. And a word that comes up is millennium. You have one viewpoint, pre-millennium. That means Jesus Christ comes back at the beginning of the millennium. The other view is post-millennium, and that means Jesus Christ comes back after the millennium. And then you know, one is ah, millennium, and I don't think they really know what they believe. Now, the word millennium the mill at the beginning means a thousand, I think it's out of Latin, and the annual year, so it's a thousand years, uh, hence you have what, the millennials? Okay, and where this comes from in the Bible, where this stems from, and this is where uh, these three different ideas will begin here in Revelation chapter 20. If you look in verse 2, you'll see a thousand years. In verse 3, in the middle of the verse, or maybe about 57.5% through it, uh, you'll see the thousand years. And in verse 4, you see the last three words, a thousand years. In verse 5, uh, about the middle of the verse, maybe about 62.3% in, is the thousand years. Uh, verse 6, the last three words, a thousand years. And then verse 7, uh, ver uh, word number 3, 4, and 5, the thousand years. Okay, so that's the springboard. All three of these viewpoints are stemming from. And so we'll take a little bit of time and look at these three different viewpoints. Now, often, Maybe a person doesn't know what's right, <clears throat> okay? And so what you do is you start with the obvious wrong, okay? You start with the obvious error and work towards health. That's like what a doctor does, okay? He asks, what's wrong with you? So he starts with what's wrong and hopefully fixes that or corrects it, and then you are on your way, hopefully, towards health, okay? The same was a mechanic, What's wrong with your car? Well, I don't run right. Oh, well, what's it sound like? It sounds like blah, 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 blah. Okay, uh, and then he's got to go out and then find out what's wrong with it. Uh, and he's, his goal is a smooth running engine and perfect timing. But in order to do that, he's got to fix the wrongs. So I'm going to go with an obvious wrong. Ah, millennial. Okay, when you, when you deal with the ah, 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 millennial, you put the A in front of something, it, it refers to the opposite, like a theist believes in God, an atheist doesn't believe in God. Okay, now an ah, millennial 
doubts the idea of a thousand years. Okay, and they, they do doubt that. And then they actually believe that Satan is currently bound, okay, and he cannot prevent people from hearing the gospel. <laughs> gospel. I mean, whew. Uh, they believe that Satan was bound uh, back at Calvary. Okay, now, uh, this one to me is quite obviously to be wrong. I mean, uh, if if, if Satan is bound uh, with a chain, like it says in Revelation 20, he, he shorems, shorems has a longums changed. You know, I do say that um, he may have an ankle monitor on him, but somebody's not monitoring that ankle. <laughs> okay, and obviously this is uh, just, mm, well, I'm thinking this one's out there. I think somebody's been snorting something uh, to come up. And, and, of course, they approach uh, this idea as symbolic or figurative. Now, if you approach this as symbolic or figurative, man, you could make up anything you want. So, in my mind, uh, a millennial will throw that idea right in file 13 where it belongs. Okay, now, um, a most popular one throughout church history is post-millennial, okay? And what post-millennialism uh, is, most post-millennialism, it's like post-toasties or something. Uh, and one time I was talking to a fella, uh, a friend had arranged a meal, and, and he said his friend was a post-millennialist, and, and he wanted me to talk to him. I don't know if he thought I could get to him. Okay, and so uh, I, I just simply ask him, uh, I understand that you're, you believe in post-millennialism. And he said, yes, I do. I said, could I uh, give you what I understand it to mean? And then you tell me if, that's, if, if my understanding is correct. Uh, you believe that the church is going to get stronger and stronger with the power of the gospel and during a thousand years, and the church is actually going to, you know, win the whole world and all that stuff. And then Christ will come back and, and rule. And he said, yeah, that's, that's about it. That's what, what I believe. Okay, uh, I said, let's see how we're doing. A billion and a half Muslims. Let's see, about a billion Roman Catholics. 500 million Hinduists, uh, you got Taoists and uh, Shintoists, and, and you know, you got all these different uh, Mormons and JWs and, and Satanism. Oh, and Wicca. I mean, it's, it's, oh boy. I said, I don't know about that. And I said, what's it looking like to you? And he said, well, it obviously doesn't look too good. <laughs> uh, and I'm saying, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, a post-millennialist is thinking that the church is getting better and better and better and stronger, very similar to an evolutionist thinking the world's getting better and better and better, even though you have evidence all around you of entropy. Entropy is, you know, is the simplified way of describing entropy. Entropy is your, your watch is running down, your batteries wear out, your car is falling apart. Uh, if an evolutionist was consistent, he'd buy his car at uh, a junkyard and someday it'd evolve into Lamborghini, but unfortunately it'd take, uh, you know, three or four billion years to become that. Uh, I see a post-millennialist as nothing more than a Christian uh, believing very similar to, um, very similar to uh, an evolutionist. Uh, it just doesn't seem to register in my mind, especially when we have examples of entropy all through the Bible, where you have uh, the flood of Noah. Okay, man fell apart and God had to judge it. Then you got Sodom and Gomorrah, and then you got Israel. What happened to Israel? Israel fell apart, did they not? Read uh, the end of the Old Testament. And then uh, the Lord kind of came back and helped him out uh, with Ezra and Nehemiah. But then right back at it, they fell apart again. And uh, nations rise and fall, nations rise and fall. And, and what do you think the church is at today? It's a mess. 
the church of Laodicea. It's a mess. It's falling apart. Entropy. That's a prophecy of the Bible. Now, often a, a, a justification for this post viewpoint is that they're thinking that uh, the church uh, needs to go into the tribulation because uh, we're having it pretty easy uh, in, in America. Well, okay, I understand that idea, but the Bible is not based on America. The Bible is based on the Middle East, and uh, Christians in the Middle East are suffering, and Christians in Muslim countries are suffering, and Christians in China are suffering, and North Korea, they are suffering, and Christians in America are suffering. It's from a different source. Uh, in many cases, it's from a narcissist or a sociopath or a psychopath as a pastor. I served under two pastors that were narcissists, full-fledged narcissists. Saw a lot of people suffering from their behavior. Uh, narcissists, sociopaths, of pastors, of fathers, control freaks. I mean, it's you talk about a pandemic. I mean, uh, I could you know name names, you know, eh, people who are very close to me that are suffering terribly because they would like to uh, have the liberty to serve God, walk with God, but a control freak for a, a father or an ex-husband or a husband uh, binds them, and they're suffering. In America, you have satanic pedophiles in the media and the music and the movie and the political industries who are hiding their human trafficking the best they can, causing thousands of children to suffer. No, the church is not going into the tribulation time period, and I'll do a video on that to verify that idea. Uh, the post-millennial viewpoint, in my mind, is very illogical, and it goes against the scientific evidence of entropy. Amazing. Now, so far, I have all millennial and post-millennial. There's two, uh, something they have in common with the classical premillennial. Now, the classical premillennial does uh, believe that Christ comes back at the beginning of the millennium, but they also, and this is a foolish idea, is they believe that the church, the New Testament church, born-again believers, are going to be the focus in the millennium, the thousand-year reign of Christ, because God has somehow transferred his promises from Israel to the church. Now, the other two, the Amalek, who believed the same thing, that all the promises God gave to Israel, he must have lied to them because they've all been transferred to the church. And the post-millennial believes the same thing. You know, the Catholic Church is promoting that idea. No, the, Ca the Catholic Church believes that God transferred the promises from Israel to them. Well, in the 1800s, the Mormons showed up, Joe Smith with his fancy glasses, and they say they're the new Israel. I mean, the little Mormon uh, young people that are knock on your door, you ask them what tribe they come from, and I've heard them say time and time again, Ephraim. And then there's Pastor Ru Russell and uh, Pastor, let's see, Pastor uh, Ruth Russell and Judge Rutherford, or vice versa, I can't remember, of the Jehovah Witnesses. They think they're Israel. I've had them tell me that. And then you got your skinhead Aryans. They think they're Israel, British Israelites. And now I'm actually hearing Baptists say they're Israel. The church is Israel. I mean, how insane is that? They're spelled different. They're spelled different. That's a classic, classic premillennial. Now, the one I'm in, the one I believe, the one that I see is common sense and biblical is the dispensational pre-millennial, okay? And one of the great distinctions of the dispensational pre-millennial is we recognize that Israel, now th this is pretty deep, Israel is Israel. And the church, the New Testament church, is the church. And they're not the same. Why? 
because they're spelled different. No, they're not the same. When I read Israel in the Bible, I understand it means Israel. And when I read about the church or the bride of Christ or the body of Christ, uh, I know I'm dealing with not Israel. Now, maybe a Jew will come to Christ, but when you come to Christ as a Jew, you lose that distinction and you're placed in the body of Christ, just as a Gentile loses his Gentile uh, race identifications uh, with God and are placed into the body of Christ. Okay, now a premillennialist, okay, as far as the program goes, the way I understand it, the way the Bible teaches it, is a very logical system, very scientific, because we understand that entropy does take place. And since uh, the church and the idea of the New Testament believer or the idea of being born again began at Calvary, that's where the opportunity to, beget, uh, to get born again began there. It wasn't understood by the apostles until Acts 15. And so this creates a, a whole new entity, the bride of Christ or the body of Christ. Now, the body of Christ was revealed uh, an idea called, we call the rapture. The Bible calls a mystery, and it calls it a translation, okay, where we're waiting to be translated from this kingdom to the heavenly kingdom. And then after that sonic boom takes place and a bunch of born-again believers are gone, uh, then God can reinstitute his, where he stopped on Daniel's 70th week, okay? And I'll do a video on that idea. So then it will be called Jacob's Trouble, not the church's trouble. It's called Jacob's Trouble, okay? And God will finish up his plan of Daniel's 70 weeks with Israel. Then there will be Armageddon, because everything's falling apart. That's entropy, and then when the Lord establishes his throne in Jerusalem, because he's of the lineage of David, that's what Gabriel told Mary in Luke chapter 1. The first thing he will do is have the judgment of the nations found in Matthew 25. And then he will become king of kings and lord of lords. That is the greatest doctrine of the Bible. That is going to be the greatest show on earth. You don't want to miss that. That's for sure. Now, Jesus said, if you're born again in John 3, you'll see it and you'll enter into it. Now, to be a part of his administration, that is conditional. But you're promised to see it and enter into it according to John chapter 3. I'm, I'm a looking forward to the greatest show on earth, the utopia, when Jesus Christ is the King of kings and Lord of lords. And that would be the program as far as the chronology the Bible lays out. After that thousand-year reign, when you read Revelation 20, the devil is unchained for a short time. He deceives a bunch of people. They have a last bang, and God wipes it out instantly, blows up the earth, blows up the heaven, and then all the righteous and unright, all the unrighteous throughout history and all the righteous under the Old Testament will be in front of the white throne judgment. And then when that's done, we got a new heaven and new earth. And that's going to be the greatest of all great. So that's the viewpoint uh, as far as, in my mind, biblical and common sense.